This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with a quick look at the force for change that the Tennessee legislature has unleashed and empowered with its vote to expel two members of its body for leading a demonstration on gun control in the Capitol. The vote happened on the 55th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King, which occurred also in Tennessee. Three members were up for expulsion. The two black members were expelled, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. I haven't been able to find a birth time for Justin Pearson, but I have one for Justin Jones. And in fact, two points of clarification. This is a different chart than the one that I interpreted a couple of days ago. And that video came down because somebody supplied me with this data, which does appear to be correct. And secondly, I want to clarify that the vote in Tennessee happened during the week that Martin Luther King had been assassinated, uh, not on the exact anniversary, which I think was April 4th, uh, although the vote proceedings were already underway. Okay, so let's look at Justin Jones's chart. It's a solar chart, meaning that there's no birth time. So I have put the sun on the ascendant. And this is a chart of a visionary change agent with a very nimble and active mind and a way of communicating and using words to trigger change in a way that interacts with authority, possibly historically has gone up against authority, but is in the context of uh, the greater good or all of people. There's almost a religious undercurrent to motivations and um wiring actually so you'll notice that there is a pile up of energy in the sign of virgo let me annotate a few things here for you point them out all this down here sun basic personality is fused with venus values able to look at everything from a point of view of discrimination almost objectivity and uh, this is a massive improver someone who is prone to look at things and see what else could be done. How could this be tidied up? How could this be cleaned up? Mercury, the ruler of communication and his mind is also in its home base of Virgo. And it is really close to Chiron, the abiding wound. I don't know enough about his background to give you examples of how this might be playing out or have played out in his life, but it could indicate getting stuck in the details and not seeing the big picture and perhaps approaching things from the perspective of what is wrong rather than what is right. Now, you'll notice that the moon seems to be close to this. Because we don't have a time of birth, we don't know what his actual moon sign is. If he was born before five, his emotional driver is Leo, which would add to uh, a charismatic being and a generosity of spirit, uh, a bold character. If it is after five, then the moon is conjunct the sun, which would really, really emphasize the Virgo nature of his personality. The moon placement is going to be important here in a second. But before I get to that, let's look at the change agent marker. He has Uranus, which is the planet of disruption, the one that shows you how to look at things in a different way. Um, the advocate of alternate viewpoints. It's a cosmic change agent, radical, unexpected, willing to shake things up. And it is conjunct Neptune, which is inspiration, perhaps religiosity. This could give a charismatic appeal to the way he presents himself and the way he speaks. And this is in direct communication with the way he speaks because it's in an unfettered flow of a trine with his uh, Mercury. So he just it just flows through him. And at a younger age, it might have come across as just being rebellious or going against the rules. Um, but there seems to be a greater purpose in it right now. And these two, these two little clusters here link into his 
purpose, which is down here. We see that he has Mars in Libra conjunct the North Node in Libra. It's a wide conjunction, but I'm going to take it. His path in life is being an advocate for justice, an activist, Mars, a fighter for justice, for legislation, perhaps for the courts, for finding harmony, for, with Uranus being in the mix, addressing, changing the way the agreements are done, changing laws, bringing things into balance. Uh, one more thing that ties into this, you'll notice that there's another body down here that is pretty late in its sign, Pluto. Pluto, a planet of power, of secrets, of dealing with life or death situations, is directly in an opportunity aspect with his Uranus and directly in an opportunity aspect with his Chiron, which means that he has both of the two cosmic change agents, Uranus, quick radical change, startling change, disruptive change, and Pluto, deep level, unavoidable evolutionary change. So his own personal journey, whatever Chiron means to him, is also part of his role in the greater picture and in his generation, because Pluto is a generational planet. It's what he is supposed to do. And the relationship between Pluto and his North Node indicates it's not always comfortable, but something pushes him on and he cannot at this point stay silent. Two of the things I've just mentioned are important for his role in the greater picture. His moon, whether it's in Leo or Virgo, connects to the United States moon in the Declaration of Independence chart. It's in an opposition to that moon, which is at 27 Aquarius. And one factor that is common among people who have held the presidency is a close contact to the U.S. moon. And the second thing that, that ties him to the U.S. chart is his Uranus at 27 degrees Capricorn. This degree might sound familiar to some of you. His Uranus is directly on the United States Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn. He is a change agent working on the U.S. power structures and institutions. The U.S. has just gone through what is called a Pluto return last year, Pluto in the sky was moving back and forth over 27 degrees Capricorn. And as it did that, it was also moving over his Uranus, coinciding with his getting elected to office. And we're not done with this. There is more to come later in the year when Pluto retrogrades, goes back to this point, sits on it for a while, and then goes forward. So his role as a change agent nationally is only getting started. There are several other indicators in his chart that he's just beginning a national rise to prominence and work. Another one is what's going on with his nodes at 29, north node, 29 degrees, Libra, south node, what he's moving behind, the fiery, angry, feisty, I'm going to do it alone, of the south node in Aries. The two eclipses in Aries and Libra this year hit his placements in Aries and Libra. April's new moon solar eclipse is on his south node, ushering in a new, huge, upgraded power up in how he works on his path, moving from being a solo agent to being a collaborator in his social justice fighting. And then in the fall, the next eclipse in this group happens directly on his Mars in Libra. And this happens in October, and it's another potent power-up moment, upgrade, huge push forward in how he expresses his drive, 
collectively, how he fights for justice, how he interacts with other people. Here's another influence that indicates an expanse, a broadening of his influence. And that has to do with what's going on with Jupiter, planet of expansion. There's my crappy Jupiter. Jupiter is in uh, May going to be moving into Taurus, moving into his ninth house of legislation, also the courts. And as soon as it gets there, um, it is going to be in a really easy flow with his sun and Venus. So this bodes extremely well for his messaging getting through for his own if he if he's in a lawsuit to get his seat back looks like it goes well he may even already have his seat back by then as i'm recording this there's already an indication that the uh, body that has the authority to appoint someone into the position he was removed from is going to send him back in next year however as jupiter moves forward it's going to link with his communication abilities, and his visionary change agent status with this wonderful flow of grounded, physical, concrete, mundane, not at all theoretical expression. And it's grounded in Pluto in Scorpio, in his third house, solar house of communication. So, his messaging is going to stay on point with gun control and it will expand to anything that's turning into a life and death situation. And of course, many other things too, because his role here is as a change agent that makes profound impact from within in really tangible ways. This particular um, configuration could also pull a terrific amount of money into his campaign. And then over the next two years, there is something else happening that is important. He is moving into his Saturn return. In March, Saturn moved into Pisces, and uh, it is moving through his solar seventh house of allies and open enemies both of which are shaping up to be very powerful figures of authority. So he's got the whole legislature basically uh, against him in, or the, the ruling of the legislature uh, against him in Tennessee, open enemies, but he also has a very prominent figures nationally in the Democratic Party already working toward his re- election and sent, having people send money to his campaign. I'm thinking specifically of Adam Schiff and Hillary Clinton. There may be others. So this is only going to test, test, test how he's using his uh, power. Is he being an adult? Is he acting with maturity? And by the time his Saturn return really hits March 2025, we will see how deep the pylons are that have built the foundation of his life to this point. And it will be a, a, a milestone moment in how much of an adult he is, how responsible he's been. Things ought to start severely locking into place if he has been using his energies in a responsible way. And if, if he doesn't, things will crater. And then a longer term, even longer, 21-year trajectory coming out of all this has to do with Pluto at the very beginning of Aquarius. It moved into that sign March 23rd. It'll be there until June 11th. And then it goes back into Capricorn to head over uh, his change agent marker, uh, that Uranus that makes him a Uranian Virgo, uh, the type that's using very innovative ways to go out and shake up the world. That's a concept, by the way, that an astrologer named Joyce Mason was researching and pursuing uh, quite a bit in the 90s. At any rate, that Pluto at um, 
zero Aquarius, whatever's happening now is uh, going to kind of plow along until early June. And then it's going to kind of go in the back burner a little bit. And early next year, Pluto will move back to that spot and it'll heat up again. And then later in the year, it'll cool off again. And then in, at the end of 2024, the uh, this particular influence moves back to that spot and heads there until 2044, which looks like a pretty long-term career trajectory. As Pluto moves through that, it's going to be in his sixth house of daily routine, working on a regular basis with power. But at the beginning of this, what it's doing is making an adjustment aspect to his son in Venus, forcing an adjustment in his identity, how he presents himself what his values are, how he expresses them. And that particular aspect does not become exact until next year. So a lot of stuff is teed up in this chart. And uh, I will go back to my statement that his role in our society is far more than being a legislator in Tennessee. His impact already is extending outside the boundaries of his district, outside the boundaries of his state, and this kind of connection to the U.S. chart indicates that he is in the next generation of leaders and could very well end up in the White House. All right, so now let's look at the chart of the vote for the expulsion really quickly. This time is approximate. It's within a few minutes of when it was reported Virgo is on the ascendant, regardless of what the actual time was. It's in the middle of the sign, which makes Mercury, planet of communication, the chart ruler. This was an intellectual, dispassionate decision, believe it or not, shown by this. So let's look at what was going on with the chart ruler. Mercury rules Virgo. It's at five degrees Taurus, really closely conjunct the North Node, the way we're going. Several important things to know about this. This rules values, it rules resources, it involves money, it involves the way of the future. And this degree takes us to October this year, when the current eclipses on the Taurus-Scorpio resource-oriented axis wrap up with a lunar eclipse right smack on this degree. So there will be more, there will be revelations, there will be a massive chapter closing coming in October from this. Let's look at the moon, which represents the people in Libra, laws, legislation, justice, and it's in a very interesting relationship with two other bodies, Venus and Neptune. Venus in Taurus up there in the ninth house of legislation and Neptune in Pisces in the seventh house of allies and open enemies are each in an adjustment aspect to the moon highlighting the importance of the moon or the people in this chart. This is called a yod or a finger of God. The connection between Venus in Taurus and Neptune in Pisces here suggests a number of things. One, sacrifice the deaths of innocent people with the Pisces, the, with Neptune in Pisces, possibly veiled motives unclear motives, money playing a role in this. There's always the issue of where's the NRA, who's funding these legislators who are making this decision, both pushing at the moon, saying something's got to give, something's got to change, adjustments have to be made. Something's been awakened in the populace that is not going to go away. And 25 Libra is going to connect this directly to Justin Jones's chart, which we're going to see in a second. One thing that indicates that 
Whatever is happening here on this day is just the beginning, is Pluto being at the very beginning of the sign of Aquarius. What's happening now across the board everywhere is a coming attractions trailer of what we're going to be dealing with and evolving with through 2044. Pluto in this chart, at the time of the vote, Pluto, Lord of Death, is in the house of children, collected death of children, community deaths, big driving issue. And it's going to come back again in January of next year when Pluto returns to this degree. And then again at the end of 2024 when Pluto returns to this degree and it is christening his entire time in the sign of Aquarius until 2044. Real quick, what did this do to Representative Jones' chart? This Venus in her home base of uh, money and focus on the body uh, is at the very top of the chart in the ninth house of legislation and politics. And you'll notice that she's making a direct, unfettered trine, easy flow of energy to his communication as change agent, as visionary change agent configuration down there, linking to Mercury in Chiron and then also to Uranus in Neptune. And she's also opposing his Pluto in Scorpio, which is the grounding force for this free flow of energy. It's drawn a lot of attention to him. And this particular flow was a factor in the speech that he gave before the vote. This was in effect all day. His free-flowing statement of values, his free-flowing statement of what things are supposed to be. And he talked, actually, there's a contact here, too, with his social activist fighter vibe. There's a an adjustment relationship here. And you can actually hear this in the words in his speech when he says what we're supposed to do here in the legislature is not act nice, but wrestling. Wrestling is part of what happens and gave many historic examples of things that had happened. Saturn, as I mentioned before, on the doorway to his house of allies and open enemies. But then let's look. Remember I mentioned the finger of God pointing to the moon. The adjustment aspect from Venus, the adjustment aspect from Neptune. The finger of God pointing to the moon directly sandwiched between his Mars social activist fighter and his North Node path. This event points the way to his future and his role with legislation. Truly remarkable.